Well, let's get some analysis now with Mohanad Ayash. He's a professor of sociology at the Mount Royal University. And he joins us now from Alberta in Canada. Really good to have you with us, uh, Professor. Let's start with this Allenby crossing because it is, uh, as it stands, the only entry point into uh, occupied West Bank from Jordan that doesn't pass through Israel. How significant is it that this crossing remains closed? Well, it's obviously significant to Palestinians who are trying to travel to and from Jordan. For example, Palestinian students who are trying to go to Jordan to fly to their universities uh, in uh, Europe, in North America. Uh, it's significant for um, uh, people who have family in Jordan and visiting each other. And as well, it's significant for all the goods that come through the crossing, um, much of which is, uh, uh, or I shouldn't say much, but mu uh, many of these goods are, uh, uh, you know, heading towards Gaza uh, as aid. Uh, so it, it's a significant disruption closing that border, significant disruption for uh, Palestinians as individuals and as uh, communities and as businesses and so on. Now, Jordan has maintained security, trade and diplomatic ties with Israel. It's it been criticized uh, for doing so, especially in the wake of uh, Israel's latest war on Gaza. So how might this incident uh, affect relations between the two countries, do you think? There, there is some souring happening between the, the, the relationship between Jordan and, and Israel, as there are for many countries around the world with Israel at the moment, precisely because of Israel's uh, unspeakable horrors and, 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 and crimes that they're committing against the Palestinian people. So, uh, you know, Israel is to blame for everything that is happening right now in the region. Uh, they are the ones that are trying to change the cultural, political, and uh, um, uh, social landscape of Palestine and the region uh, to suit their um, insane, violent ideology of creating greater Israel. Um, and, and that's causing enormous tensions with a lot of the Arab regimes that they have worked with. But more to the point here is that it is generating in an incredible amount of hostility towards Israel among the people. And this is what we see really happening in this uh, incident is uh, people, I mean, this, the investigation that the Jordanians are doing, uh, are, are doing is ongoing, so, so we'll wait to hear what they are uh, going to say about that. But there's already been some suggestions that this was a lone wolf uh, sort of uh, operation, that this person acted on their own accord, um, which is reflective of the larger uh, social um, uh, and growing hostility towards Israel on um, uh, Arab streets across the Arab world, not just in Jordan. Um, people don't just get over a genocide. People are watching this genocide unfold in front of their eyes, uh, and some will take matters into their own hands and, and carry out such operations. So uh, Israel will never enjoy security or peace uh, with the Palestinian people or with any Arab uh, uh, nations. Uh, so long as they continue their, their settler colonial conquest of Palestine, it's really that simple. It is on them. They are the aggressors and they will this these things will continue to happen and maybe even escalate. Um, uh, the, the, the prospect of a wider regional war is still a possibility uh, and it's a direct result of Israel's uh, uh, genocide of the Palestinian people. So so uh, we'll, it, it, will, it remains to be seen what happens in the immediate term in terms of Jordanian-Israeli um, relations. I don't suspect that the Jordanians want to upset that, um, uh, but, but things are becoming a little bit more fractured as the genocide uh, uh, keeps going. Uh, what about this what idea that perhaps uh, this could signal the start of another uprising, another intifada, similar to what we saw in the early 2000s. Do you think that if the longer this war drags on, the longer that uh, many in the Arab world, many Palestinians see uh, Gaza as being under attack by an illegal occupier, could that perhaps lead to another uprising? 
It absolutely could. Um, uh, the, the Palestinian people are living in a pressure cooker. Uh, the Israeli uh, occupation, it's not just in the uh, physical acts of violence that you hear, uh, you know, as, as, of course, the heinous murders and the maimings and the, the sniper killings and uh, the, the torture in prison and all of these horrendous violences that the Israeli state carries out uh, get, get uh, attention. But there's also all these other structural violences that Palestinians endure on a daily day to day basis, humiliations at the checkpoint, lack of economic opportunity, um, uh, lack of education, um, uh, lack of freedom. Um, uh, so so uh, the, the Palestinians are, are constantly living under this pressure cooker that the Israelis have created in order to, to encourage Palestinians to leave their land. That's the whole point behind it. But Palestinians, what they continue to do is remain on their land and then they engage in uprisings. Um, so so we can see another uprising, of course. and and and. We can still see as well more and more people from the region joining such an uprising in their own way, some of which will appear uh, in, in cases like this attack, uh, but, but they will appear in a number of different ways. So uh, look, the people on the ground are really fed up with the situation. They're, some of them are very fed up with their own Arab regimes for their inaction on this issue. Um, so so the, the, there, I'm afraid there is much more volatility coming our way. Uh, and again, I go back to it. It goes directly back to Israel's, if you know, insane, violent uh, ideology of greater Israel and, and, and their, in, in, you know, determination to conquer uh, all of Palestine and turn it into Israel. Okay, Mohanad uh, and Ayash, we'll leave it there for now. Thank you so much again for joining us on the program.